Hey everybody, it's James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and uh, we'll be looking at these web text boxes that I've created on my website. Um, I've had quite a few requests to know how to do these including some requests from some other channels as well, web design channels. So I'm going to release this tutorial under a Creative Commons license and show you all how to do it. They're very useful for adding links, adding any sort of paragraphs, any sort of text into the boxes and they automatically auto expand and Trust me, these, these text boxes save you a lot of time in your web design. Okay, so if you're watching this in YouTube, I'll put a link in the below bar. You can come to my website and just below the video, you can click on the download tutorial files. Click OK. It's in a zip file, so you can just save it to your desktop and then you need to go into Dreamweaver and recreate the site. Okay, now to recreate the site, just go to site, new site. And if you saved it all to your desktop, you can just go and click on the folders icon and uh, direct it to where the local root folder is and then direct it to where the local images folder is also and then click OK. OK, now if you go to File New, we'll select a blank page, HTML, XHTML 1.0 Transitional and press Create. And we'll go straight into the code, we'll split the body tags as usual and uh, we'll start typing our first div attribute. So we'll go div class and we'll call it box. And the reason we're creating a div with a class is because we're going to want to recreate this time and time again to create and put different links into our website. Okay, so press refresh, you'll see that the div has appeared inside design view and you need to go into the CSS styles and select to create a new CSS rule and we want to define it in a new style sheet and then click OK. OK, so you're going to make sure that you're inside the CSS folder before you save it and I'm going to save mine as boxes.css so just boxes and then press save and it will add the CSS style sheet attribute to the end of it. OK, now click OK because we're going to go into the boxes CSS and hand code it as usual and that will be done from at the top of the screen beside the source code. Now you'll see the CSS rule we just created for class box because we highlighted box and uh, we created a new CSS rule from that. So I'm going to split the tags open there and we're going to add a background image and a few various other selectors. So I'm going to type in background colon and we're going to make it a transparent URL and we're going to select one of the images that are already in the images folder and the image we're going to select is box bottom. So when we've selected that, what's going to happen is every time you type in div class box, it's automatically going to add that background image to every div that has that attribute called dot class box. We're going to set it to no repeat because we don't want it to repeat. We want it to scroll naturally along the web page and we're going to position it to the left as far as it will go and to the bottom as far as it will go. We're also going to set a margin attachment on the bottom, so margin dash bottom colon and we're going to set it to 10 pixels and we're going to set it to 10 pixels so it will push away anything below it by 10 pixels. We're also going to set some padding, so we'll go padding colon and we're going to set it to 0 pixels top, 0 pixels on the right. We're going to set it to 15 pixels on the bottom to push up any content within it so it doesn't spread outside of the, the image and uh, we'll set a width of 250 pixels which is the width of the image. Now I highly recommend playing about with these settings so you know exactly why I've put this code in and what it does. Okay so I'm going to save it and preview it in the browser so you can see what we've just done and uh, we've put in the bottom image, the bottom image that's going to hold all the content in place at the bottom and remember it's got that 10 pixel margin so it's going to push anything below it away by 10 pixels also. Okay, so remember that every time you go in the source code and you type div class box, that background image is going to appear at the bottom. Now we're going to go inside the div class box and we're going to add a h3 title attribute. And we're going to attach another image to the h3 and this will be the top box which will join them all together. So I'm going to type in h3, I'm going to give it a title of box title, just a generic title and I'm going to close that h3 off and you can see the text appears in design view. And now we're going to click back into the CSS and we're going to add a selector for the H3. So we want to target the H3 which is inside the class dot box. So we'll type in dot box and the H3 inside of it. 
OK, so open curly brackets, we'll close the curly brackets and put in some code now. Well, the first thing we're going to put in is the background image and that's going to be the silver box. So we'll type in background colon and we'll type transparent URL and we'll search for the box top. And there it is, it's 250 pixels in width and 35 pixels in height and it's only two kilobytes. Okay, so if I just click inside of design view, you'll see it will appear at the bottom there, but we still need to make some adjustments because it's not showing to its full extent. All right, well, the first thing we want to do is we're going to set it to repeat if it has to. So we'll just type in repeat. And we'll also want it to scroll naturally with the page as well. And we want to position it zero on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. And that will just position it nice and snug. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll change the color of the text. I'm going to type in color colon and we're going to type in pound. Free, 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 sort of dark gray color and colon and we're going to change the font size so I'm going to type in font dash size colon and we'll change that to 12 pixels and we'll put a semicolon on the end. Now if you remember earlier I said that the image that we're going to insert is 250 pixels in width and 35 pixels high. Well that's not 35 pixels so we're going to set the height on it now so that the full um, height of the box appears. So we'll type in height colon and I'm going to put 35 pixels and that's the exact height of the image and we have a semicolon on the end and if I click inside design view or press refresh you'll see that you can see the full image now. Now we don't quite have the H3 title tag where we want it to be so we're going to position that using a, a sneaky little trick and we're going to type in line dash height colon and I'm going to set the line height to 30 pixels. And there you go. See, it pushes away from the top and pushes away from the bottom. And it sort of arrives there just in the center. Now, pre-built in Streamweaver, the H3 or any title tag will come with a pre-built um, margin attached to it. So we're going to take the margin out and you'll see that the box collapses. There we go. So all we have now is literally the image, the box and the title with no margins. Now we're going to set some padding and because I set a line height on the H3 title tag, we're going to want zero pixels top and bottom, but we will want 15 pixels left and right. So it will push it away from the edge there by 15 pixels and won't allow the title to go any further than 15 pixels. OK, so let's preview that in the browser. I'm going to use Firefox as always. And there we go. So what you've got is your box, the box top, the box bottom, and you've got the title tag there. So now all we need to do is add some content into the center and make a few adjustments there as well. OK, so let's fill the box and we'll go back into the source code to do that. And we'll put in a paragraph tag. And uh, if you grab some text from anywhere or if you want to type the text in manually, I'm actually going to paste some text into the center here and uh, just to fill out the box, make it have a bit of content so we can see how to adjust it from there. So I'm going to paste the text in now and I'm going to click inside design view to make that show up or press refresh if you want. OK, well, we can see at least part of the effect is working because it the box is auto expanding and the image is showing below it. That's something to do with the padding and the margins affecting it. OK, so we're pretty much there. We just need to adjust the sides. Now, it's, it is auto expanding, but we need to add a border to the left and the right and give the illusion that it's completely self-contained within a box. We also need to add some padding um, to the text because it's sticking out very close to the edges there. So we need to pad it in a little bit. OK, so I'm going to go back into the CSS file that we created earlier and we're going to need a selector for the paragraph. So this will be dot box, so the class box and the paragraph inside of the class box. So open curly brackets, close the curly brackets and we'll start typing some code. OK, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a background color. So we'll type in background colon and we'll say pound FF FF FF. Uh, if you want, you can type in three Fs and uh, we're going to add some more attributes as well. We're going to type in none for the background image, so no background image. We'll set it to repeat also. 